I promised you guys several weeks ago to do a review on the Canon M50. I'm ready to do that review now. One of the reasons I put off doing the review of the Canon M50 for so long is because I was working through a bunch of footage from the Canon M50 and I didn't want to prematurely make snap judgments on it when a lot of people are looking at the Canon M50 for a vlogging camera. We went after the Canon M50 thinking that we would be able to use it indoors for low light to shoot better video. That is true in most respects of what we were able to actually achieve. We went after the Canon M50 with a kit lens, the 15 to 45 kit lens. This is the kit lens that came on the camera, or came with the camera. It's a 15 to 45. Got image stabilization. The that lens itself though is not fast enough. It's only a 3.5 to 6.3 uh, f-stop and it's not a fast enough lens for the low light video that we wanted to shoot inside. So we ended up purchasing a 22 millimeter two f-stop uh, lens for the camera. It is fast enough. So I wanted to shoot some video with that so that I could give you a more detailed view of whether that fixed the problem. This is what I think. I think that it'll work great for the inside video that we bought it to shoot. I love having the view screen on it so that I can see what kind of picture I'm getting back from the camera immediately. So I can see if maybe I've overexposed or I've underexposed the shot really fast. The other thing is, is that I really like having depth of color over the GoPro that we usually shoot on. But I'm shooting this video on the GoPro and as you can see, it's sort of dark, but it's not unusable. If I only could buy a GoPro or the M50, which one would I buy? Well, definitely the GoPro. The GoPro is a much more versatile camera. I would not hesitate to take it outside no matter what the weather conditions were. And we've had no problem, real problem with shooting most of what we wanted to shoot inside with the GoPro. I just running a 40 watt bulb here and it's plenty of light. Now there's a little bit of supplemental light coming in from outside, but nothing that the camera's actually picking up, I don't think. So it is enough. And the GoPro has really good, uh, the software in it is really good for wind noise. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but that is probably the biggest difference between shooting on the M50 is I have to remember if I'm outside that the audio has the potential not to be any good at all. Whereas the GoPro, usually the audio is salvageable if we're not standing out in the middle of 40 an hour mile an hour winds. The greenhouse planting video was completely shot on the M50. Now the M50 does have an added benefit of being taking really, really, really good photos. And it's probably, it was a benefit that I wasn't really thinking about. Wasn't really something I had thought that I had missed was having a camera that took pictures all the time, that I could take pictures with or shoot video on, but having this camera that I can shoot pictures, really good pictures on or, or video on is really nice. The GoPro takes very decent pictures, but I'm used to taking pictures on a high-end camera. I'm not used to shooting video on a camera that requires you to know anything about the shutter speed or the f-stops or the iso all of that is preset on the gopro and i usually just let the gopro make most of the decisions i do have some predefined limits on iso and i do turn off the wind on the microphone depending on whether i'm shooting inside or outside I also use EV comp, depending on inside or outside on the GoPro. I don't ever make a decision on shutter speed on the GoPro. 
and the ISO blocks, it gives me a top limit and a bottom limit, and I can just let it decide that on the M50, you actually have to pick an ISO or tell it to go into full auto, which could give you an ISO that is really, really noisy. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you only can buy one camera, you buy a GoPro at the price point of the M50, because you can buy a lot of accessories for the GoPro at that price point. If you're looking in the GoPro price range, which I think is like 350 or $400, I really don't think you can beat the GoPro. I've not used the GoPro 8, I'm using the GoPro 7 here, and I full believe that the GoPro 8 is probably a lot better yet. I'm really happy with the M50 for both indoor video and indoor pictures. The M50 is great for the outdoor color, and it also does a really good job with, uh, it does a really great job with shadows and lights, the difference between that, I can't remember what that's called. I'm really happy, but you're going to need a faster lens, be it this one, or they make an 11, 11 to 22. The 11 to 22 would probably be nicer to vlog on, but it isn't as fast or have as low an f-stop as this camera, so it's not gonna get as much low light as the 22. That's why we went with the 22. I'm going to stop this now. I'm gonna change out cameras. I'm gonna put this one on the tripod and I'm gonna give you a shot of what that looks like. Show you guys just how much different that is. This fold out screen here is just so nice. I've actually got the GoPro set up running into my monitor right behind the GoPro for a video out so that I can do the same thing that I'm getting used to doing with this camera where I just stand here, hold it, and I've got a cam uh, immediately got a screen behind it. So yeah, I can stand here like this and hold it, and I've immediately got a script screen, I can check it. You still have to talk to the lens, or you get weird with your eyes looking off to the corner. But with the GoPro, I feel like, especially when I'm doing inside shots where I'm talking to the camera, I really miss being able to see what the shot looked like before I take the shot. I want to know that I'm not creating junk content before I get to where I'm trying to put it on the computer and I have content that isn't as nice as I was hoping it was. The image stabilization on this is something I didn't talk about. The image stabilization is not nearly as good as it is with the GoPro. I don't feel like that matters as much as the wind noise thing. And you can see in that greenhouse video that it is more shaky than our videos normally are. And that's because I run it through the GoPro. All right, I'm gonna take just a second to explain to you that I am shooting this at 100 ISO. And the reason I took the minute to explain that is because I have the GoPro set up to go max out at 800, so we'll assume as dark as that shot was, that it's maxed out at 800 ISO. Now there's no way to go back and check that on the GoPro. You can see on the shot how much better the focus is and how much better the light is on the Canon M50. I am shooting external audio on the M50 via the uh, H4N Pro Zoom Handy Recorder. So, and I don't even know if I'll use it. But that is a side effect of shooting on this camera is that I feel like at this point I need insurance of shooting external audio as well as internal audio just in case. Now a little bit of that is because I don't know as much as I want to about this camera. The other thing about this camera is you'll notice that the 22 millimeter lens is, even though I was shooting in linear on the GoPro, which is a, the smallest frame it will shoot, this one's still tighter. And that is a side effect of shooting on this 22 millimeter lens, is that it's tighter like this because this 
22 millimeter lens is equivalent to a 36 millimeter lens on a film camera and I can hold it almost at this distance here but I can't I can't get away from it as far as I can with the GoPro. I can hold the GoPro out a long ways and I was noticing with some shots I was running yesterday of Farm Kid 1, I felt like I had to be much further away to compose the shot the same way that I would have if shooting video with the GoPro. I don't know if that was necessarily a bad thing. It was just something that I wasn't expecting going out there because I have spent so little time with the 22 millimeter. I was playing with the 18 to 45 lens and the 18 to 45 lens allowed me to go out to 18, which would have been fine outside, but I still had the 22 on because I'm still trying to get really comfortable with this 22. You also notice the depth of field. I am really in focus. My hand does not make some for beautiful portraits but you have to open that f-stop outside and you even have to open that f-stop a little bit inside sometimes open it up so that you can uh, or slow that down so that you can get a better depth of field you have to move to about an f-stop 8 to get a full depth of field on most things whereas if you're using this you're already at about the full max depth of field so that's the difference between the two I hope I didn't discourage anybody that really wanted it but I wanted to give you an honest review and the honest review that I can give you is that I really think the GoPro 7 in this price point is probably a better camera for a vlogger going out and shooting all the time because Adding something like this to the GoPro down the road gives you really great sound. You already have a really great picture. If you want a great camera for video and pictures, then you're probably looking at something like the Canon M50. For videos and pictures at the quality you're seeing here, and with the caveats I've mentioned, the M50 really is a great camera. One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, I'm shooting on the Canon M50 in 1080p 30 frames per second. Now it'll shoot 60 frames per second, but it means you have half as much uh, light getting... You have to shoot with a faster shutter speed, so you get half as much light getting to your sensor. And you can shoot in 4K. Except that the crop factor means that I can't hold the camera and shoot in 4K. That is a limiting factor on this. I can shoot in 4K on the GoPro easily and easily hold it because at 4K you go into wide mode on the use of the sensor so you can see more of the picture. We almost always shoot on the GoPro in 2.7K, which doesn't actually exist, someplace between the two, and then we downscale to 1080p.